In 1995, on behalf of the United Nations, Jacques Attali, an advisor to former French President François Mitterrand, conducted more than a hundred interviews and consultations for a report on the illegal trade in radioactive materials. Thus was born a 70-page report that alarmed not only the United Nations. According to Attali, there are several countries in the world that now offer on the black market about 30 kilograms of material suitable for the creation of atomic weapons. 9 kilograms is enough to build a simple atomic bomb. Attali considered the source of dangerous smuggling to be primarily the territory of the former Soviet Union. If he is to be believed, many Russian nuclear weapons depots are only padlocked. Russian naval officers even managed to steal 4 kilograms of enriched uranium from a decommissioned nuclear submarine in Murmansk. The thieves were arrested, but only 3 kilograms of uranium were found. The situation in the peaceful atom sphere of the former Soviet Union is getting increasingly out of control. At the Mayak Production Center in Chelyabinsk it is believed that up to 13% of the material suitable for atomic weapons is missing. And the idea that terrorists or interested governments can buy everything they need for an atomic bomb on the black market is no longer a play on the sick imagination. Attali argues that non-nuclear powers, terrorists, mafias and even sex can get hold of atomic weapons. The level of international control is totally inadequate. While the United States alone has 7,200 scientists involved in animal disease research, the International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna has only 225 inspectors. Attali, who used to be the head of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, also reports that a terrorist group with several hundred million dollars would not be prevented today from building an atomic bomb. This is how the worst-case scenarios in the style of James Bond films, so far perceived as fantasy, can come true. The Federal Intelligence Service, which itself is in trouble because of the so-called plutonium scam, has perceived intelligence on the atomic black market as one of its most important assignments since the collapse of the Soviet Union. Pulika's internal annual report for 1995 gave alarming figures. In 1995, the German Federal Intelligence Service, BND, recorded 169 separate cases worldwide involving offers to sell radioactive materials, indications of smuggling, confiscation of radioactive or contaminated substances, criminal use of radioactive materials, or threats to use radioactive materials or atomic charges. The information was obtained from intelligence, official, and open sources. Up to 44% of the cases in 1995 involved confiscation or theft of radioactive material, i.e., the entry or removal of radioactive material from the market. The remaining 56% involved commercial offers, indications of trade in atomic material, or threats to use it. Often these cases included photographs, descriptions of the material, or certificates proving its existence. While there were no seizures of plutonium worldwide in 1995, according to the BND, there were two cases of seizures of high-quality enriched uranium, enrichment level 20 to 30 percent, which had previously been fuel for Russian nuclear submarines. A possible weak point, according to BND, is transportation. Due to great socioeconomic difficulties, the security of nuclear warheads and weapons-usable material may deteriorate in the future. The increase in organized crime, specifically in Russia, is cause for further concern. In two 1995 cases, the people responsible for storing the enriched nuclear material, a storekeeper and a scientist, were proved to be thieves themselves. Russian officials interviewed by BND confirmed that security and control of nuclear facilities was steadily deteriorating. These deteriorations range from personal and technical unsuitability to resistance to inspectors by the Russian inspection agency Gosatom Nadzor. Nuclear radiation detectors are often lacking at checkpoints in nuclear cities or institutes. Technical control systems are for the most part obsolete and cannot function properly. Nor, according to the BND, will international assistance help. International joint projects and financial assistance arrive in time, but in view of the immense number of poorly protected nuclear facilities in Russia can only conditionally and weakly contribute to solving the overall problem. Since the desired amount of close intelligence cooperation on nuclear smuggling with the new democracies in the East has not yet been achieved, the BND will continue to work with Western partner services to investigate nuclear smuggling and its transit routes in Eastern Europe in the near future.
In an internal BND document, the reasons for the BND's restrained stance on cooperation with Eastern European countries are primarily attributed to the Russian atomic detectives. In August 1994, the BND learned that two nuclear traffickers had once again been arrested in Russia. But these traffickers turned out to be two employees of the Russian counterintelligence service FSK, i.e., the secret service whose mission also includes combating illegal nuclear trade. Since 1980, the BND has annually received information on those interested in buying material for atomic bombs, especially in the Near and Middle East. About the Islamic Republic of Iran, for example, it says, some specific reports in 1995, based on their content and the reliability of their sources, leave little doubt about Iran's buying interest. But a report in Focus magazine in October 1995 that 11 atomic warheads had disappeared from Russia, which, in fact, were to be destroyed after being shipped from Ukraine to Russia, turned out to be a duck. The alleged buyer of these 11 allegedly disappeared warheads was again named Iran. Over the years, the BND has received two serious allegations that terrorist groups were thinking of using radioactive weapons to achieve their goals. In the first, the Japanese Aung Shinrikyo sect, known since the Tokyo subway gas attack, had obtained the technology to build nuclear weapons and began exploring uranium deposits on sect-owned land in Australia. In addition, according to confirmed US information, one member of the sect tried to buy nuclear weapons in Russia. Another case involves Chechen terrorist Shamil Basayev, who stockpiled radioactive cesium-137 in Moscow and threatened terrorist attacks against Russian nuclear reactors. But the BND excludes the possibility that terrorist groups will increase their interest in nuclear weapons to the level of priority in the near future. To terrorists, radioactive materials, as before, promise more disadvantages than advantages. Much more dangerous, because more unpredictable, seem to be sectarian, fanatical or religious groups. With a particularly unpleasant foreboding, Pulik is watching a new generation of terrorists in Iran, Sudan, Algeria and Egypt, fundamentalists and extremists who are ready for unconditionally suicidal terrorist actions. In addition, Italian prosecutors are investigating mafia groups that traded radioactive material. It was stolen in Russia, sold in Germany, temporarily stored in Italy, and then resold to North Africa. 44-year-old forensic investigator Nunzio Sarpiatero of the Sicilian city of Catania stayed up nights in early 1997. He was on the trail of uranium-235, suitable for the creation of an atomic bomb. Sarpiatero recounted, Unfortunately, everyone in Sicily is very concerned because not only did we find undeniable evidence of trafficking in radioactive material in connection with our investigation, but we also found that this was material that could have been used to make nuclear weapons. According to Italian sources, the uranium originated in Russia and was initially imported by couriers, who usually did not know at all what they were bringing, to the frankfurt main area. There the material was bought by mobsters, according to Sarpietro, an atomic investment with bombshell interest. In July 1996, two Portuguese couriers, Bellarmino V and Carlos M, were arrested in Syracuse for wanting to sell a uranium-235 to the Mafia. From Sicily the material was supposed to go to North Africa, presumably to Libya. And from Wiesbaden, in 1995, Sicily got not uranium and plutonium, but osmium and mercury, both also suitable for making atomic bombs. It is often forgotten how the couriers transporting such goods risk their health. Mistakenly believing that they are transporting the slightly radioactive osmium-187 used in radiation medicine, four people transported two grams of the very highly radioactive cesium-137 from Lithuania to Switzerland via Wiesbaden in 1992. These men, three Poles and one naturalized German, were arrested. The health of two of them suffered terribly. They were transporting cesium-137 in a completely unsuitable thimble-sized container. A few weeks later, five Poles smuggled also highly radioactive cesium-137 and strontium-90 from Russia to Germany. In January 1993, two Poles were detained at a border crossing with four kilograms of cesium. In March 1993, the Lithuanian Ignalina NPP lost 270 kilograms of uranium fuel rods. In May 1994, for the first time in Germany, 6 grams of plutonium-239 suitable for an atomic bomb was found in an illegal market in a garage in Tengen. 
According to the BND, the plutonium was enriched to 99.75%. As we know today, the plutonium came from the Russian Arzema-16 nuclear complex. There, in the military nuclear laboratory with the abbreviated name S2, experiments with plutonium are conducted. Plutonium belongs to the class of transuranic elements and is considered the most poisonous substance on Earth. Experiments on dogs showed that 27 micrograms of this substance, i.e. 27 millionths of a gram, when injected, would lead to lung cancer in humans. Intelligence and military in recent years have experimented extensively with this poisonous substance. According to a BND employee, American doctors injected 12 people with plutonium in 1945 during a still-secret military experiment to test the effects of this heavy metal on human metabolism. New Scientist magazine predicted for the year 2000 that there would be about 1,700 tons of plutonium in the world enough for an as yet unpredictable number of bombs. And the reduction of nuclear arsenals agreed upon between the superpowers would leave nearly 200 tons more plutonium. The experts of the American think tank Rand Corporation quite seriously proposed in the spring of 1997 that the American government store the plutonium released after disarmament in the East and the West in a plutonium prison in Greenland, jointly guarded by Russian and American troops. Even if the future of the START II and START III disarmament treaties becomes clear, humanity will still have to live with the dangers of the illegal plutonium trade. To no one's surprise, more and more criminals claim they can get their hands on plutonium. Already in 1984, 42 people were charged in Italy for contacts with various intelligence services. They were accused of offering to sell three atomic bombs and 33 kilograms of plutonium to representatives of Syria, Iraq and the PLO. The deal fell apart because not even plutonium samples were delivered. But in the case of the Tengen find, the situation is quite different. For the first time, weapons-grade plutonium suitable for an atomic bomb was actually found on the German black market. On July 23, 1994, Bernd Schmidbauer, Minister of State responsible for coordination of the secret services of the Federal Chancellery, said about the discovery in Tengen to the newspaper Welt, there is a close connection between drug dealing, money laundering, counterfeiting, human trafficking and nuclear smuggling. Germany does not yet know the market for buyers of such material. When asked if nuclear terrorists could blackmail humanity, Schmidbauer said, we have to seriously consider this possibility. We cannot turn a blind eye to this danger. So we're trying by all means to be proactive, which means scouting the structures behind these deals and finding out what material is being moved, finding out what the market for potential buyers might look like. But how easily the reputations of undercover agents secretly trying to scout out such deals can be damaged by the intrigues of other intelligence agencies is illustrated by the plutonium scam. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.